I've been designing for the last three years and here are some tools that I use every time I take up a design project. So if you are searching or if you are clicking on this video, I'm pretty sure you are in search of some new amazing tools that you can use. So I hope that you'll find at least one in this list that is helpful to you. First and foremost is Notion. Notion does not really help me with anything because I'm a much of a notebook and pen kind of person who likes to take notes everywhere but having the project on notion and on me all the time because notion is on my phone on my ipad it's on my laptop so everywhere i go i see the project and i'm always aware of it this helps me look out for motivation it this helps me be aware of the project and it also helps me organize and it's way easier to find files and all the documentation on notion than searching through all the books that i have so whenever i get a client or whenever i get a design project the first thing i do is to open a notion page and upload all the details of it on it so once everything is documented and I'm ready to start the designing project, the next place I reach is Dribble and Behance. I can't really decide which website I like more. I just uh, open them into separate Google tabs and skip everywhere. So these are the two places that I go for inspiration. I have seen myself not using Pinterest so much mostly because it's too crowded and there's a lot of mess on Pinterest right now unless I'm searching for color palettes or a specific aesthetic themes I don't really use Pinterest I get a lot of my inspiration from either Dribble or Behance because a lot of people have uploaded a bunch of things on there that you can use as inspiration the third and the most obvious tool right now is Milanote Milanote is crucial for all of my design projects because this is the app that that I use to create my mood boards. Milanote is a free web-based app where you can drag and drop images, you can put in links, and you can even connect it to Behance and Dribble projects. Milanote makes the brainstorming process of my designs definitely 10 times more easier and it's so nice and easy to work with and also to organize. It also looks aesthetic, which is a major plus for all the assets images graphical templates and fonts i use envato elements even though for fonts sometimes i use the font.com i know a lot of designers do not like the font.com but the library is huge and it's fun sometimes especially if you have a lot of spare time the font.com is a good place to hang out with searching for new fonts that you might use but Envato is much more stable and it is much more easier to filter through fonts and get what you like on Envato Elements. I also use Envato Elements for video effects and Premiere Pro templates. All the effects you see on this video or any other video on my channel are all effects that I bought or purchased from Envato Elements. It comes at a subscription fee but £20 per month I find it pretty useful because I'm using this all the time and I'm also earning through graphic designing so it's not a big investment and it's definitely worth the price I pay for it. The next tool I've recently added this to my toolbox and I've recently started using this a lot which is ChatGPT. I talk a lot to ChatGPT about a bunch of things. It's like my personal mentor or tutor whatever you say. It helps me study, it helps me focus, it makes me timetables and it also helps me in my design process. I use ChatGPT for some specific things during my design process. Firstly, I use it to create keywords when I'm mood boarding or brainstorming so that I get more specific things to search for or to find inspiration. I also use it to create briefs. I use it for documentation purposes. I use it to write letters, cover letters and stuff to give me fake content that I can fill in when I'm creating all the mockups and stuff. So I use ChatGPT a lot because it makes life so much more easier and it's efficient and I found it very effective. I've also been using image generation AIs to come up with ideas and logo design ideas, but I found Midjourney to be a bit expensive and DALI 2 does not really do that good of a job. But still, if I have, if I'm in like a mental block 
where i can't really think of a lot of things or i'm not in a mental state where i can be creative i use this ai generation tools to give me a brief idea or to just warm my brain up so that i can start working on it for editing graphic design and all those other purposes i use photoshop and illustrator yes i know they are expensive but my college gives it away for free as a part of my course so I'm using them right now. In certain rare cases when I'm designing using my iPad, I do use Procreate, but I'm not really that good with Procreate and I'm not yet that comfortable with Procreate. So mainly I use my iPad for gaming, but still there are some instances where Procreate definitely helps me out. Other than this, I use pdfcandy.com to convert the images that I've created or the presentations into PDFs or any other formats. I've been using that for three to four years now and I've not really seen a problem with it so I'm not changing it anytime soon and in very rare occasions very very rare occasions when I can't really figure out what color palette to choose from I go on to the website coolers.com it this is a website that gives you a lot of trending color palettes which you can uh, you know look through and choose whichever you like and I've not been using this for a long time now, but every now and then I find myself going on to the website just to find some inspiration. Sometimes you just, there is, you just, it just does not click when you are designing something. None of the color palettes seem to be working and the website always helps me find the right choice. So that is also one website that I keep in mind. And lastly, of course, YouTube for a lot of tutorials and motivational channels that I follow that teach me designing and I'm learning every single day and trying to be better at least by a percentage with every single day passing by. So that's it. That's the list of apps that I use for my design process. You might be doing something else, but try these out. These are the best. I've been doing this for quite some time now. And these are the apps that I've ended up with. So yes, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.